Hi, yeah, so I just wanted to pop on and do a quick video. Um, I apologise for the mess on me. I have been in bed all week with really bad vertigo. So um, <clears throat> I've just finally made it up out of bed and to a point where I'm sort of semi-decent to do a video. <laughs> um, but I wanted to talk about something that happened this week because um, we do lots of videos about our camping and how much we're enjoying it. And I know there's a whole big thing about, you know, um, how on social media we always put the highlight trail. But genuinely, our camping experiences have been really good. And we've had lots of really positive um, experiences with it. So we haven't really had anything negative to say until this week when we had a bit of a scare. Now, this is something which some of you will watch this video and you will say, well, you should have done your research beforehand and it's all your own fault and you're stupid for not having the right things in place. Um, but there might be people out there who are just starting to look into this or who maybe haven't had the right information. And so I wanted to talk this through because we had a real um, panic. Everything sorted now. Um, we are back on solid ground. Um, but for a horrible couple of hours on Monday, we thought that um, the fan life dream was over. We, we thought we were going to have to sell a curiel because um, we had conversations with our insurers which made it seem like it was going to be completely inviolable to keep the fan um, and to make it road legal. So going back to November when we purchased the fan, uh, obviously in the UK, I know insurance rules are different around the world, but in the UK you have to have insurance, you have to have tax insurance and it has to be MOT'd to make a vehicle road legal. And we did all that whenever we bought the fan. Um, little Squirrel's godmother is an insurance broker, so that made it really easy. Um, I phoned her up the night we were looking at the fan, you know, it was like Friday night. And I messaged her and said, are you still working? She said, yes. I said, great, we're buying a fan. And I gave her all the details and we got it insured. And it was no problem. Before we drove the fan, it was fully insured. So then we started doing the work on it and after we'd been away once or twice she messaged me and she said your fan's insured with no modifications so now that you've modified it you need to contact the company. Now she said I can't deal with that side of things because it's a separate department that deals with it once you start modifying it. Can you phone the insurance company and just check that you are um, fully insured and that everything's still okay with your policy? Now, I have been quite sick on and off. I have chronic conditions. And um, through not being well, through brain fog and forgetting, and through anxiety at having to make phone calls that I'm just not fully in the right headspace to make, I hadn't got around to making that phone call until Monday morning when... Mr. Squirrel said to me, would you please phone and get that answered? Because you know what men are like, they have to have you do it. It's always easier if you do it. Um, so I phoned and the guy said, yeah, look, it's not a problem. He said, your current insurer does not cover camper fans. But um, it, it has to be changed because the second you put a bed into it, for insurance purposes, it becomes a camper. So we need to change companies, but that won't be a problem. We can cancel this policy, get you in with a different company. Um, but you said there's quite a few different companies that I'll need to check out. So I'll go off here um, and I'll price up different companies and sort out the best insurance for you. And I'll call you back. No problem. So he calls back um, me an hour or so later. And he said, right, we're, ha we're having a little bit of a problem here with this. Um, the company, so the company that we were insured with originally, they wouldn't do camper fans at all. So they were out. The company that they prefer to use for camper fans wouldn't insure a Curiel because she's a 2006 model, um, which makes her 18 years old, sorry. 
um, and they won't insure any vehicle over 15 years old. So they wouldn't touch us. There were other insurance companies that they work with that do do camper vans that are over 15 years old. But these ones, um, they, I don't know if Mr. Squirrel's back to be five here. So when you get your van, you get the V5 certificate. The V5 is effectively what used to be the textbook. It's your registration document. On that, it states what type of your vehicle is. And the vehicle is obviously a fan. There are changes that you can make to that V5. You can send away to the DVLA as you do different... Um, turn this around. I've got one of these new TikTok phone holders that follows your face. But um, it, I don't know what it's doing. It keeps turning around and I don't want you to see my messy craft table. <laughs> so, um, yeah, when you do a full conversion, you can send away to the, the DVLA and you can have the type of vehicle um, changed on your V5. Some people do it. It is notoriously difficult to do. It is, um, people like do everything, jump through lots and lots of hoops. And it's, it's not easy. Um, it's moving again. <laughs> um, people do everything that they've been told to do, basically. And they still get told, oh, it's a fan with windows. Um, we haven't put a curiel through that because we know that it won't be reclassified. Um, we're using her as a day camper, as you know, we have our tent. Um, we haven't put masses and masses of stuff in her that would make her class as a camper van. So, um, you know, I went online to look at it and uh, you have to have extra windows. You have to have at least two windows on one side of the van. You have to have fixed cooking. We have all our cooking equipment in her, but it can be removed because obviously we go with a tent as well. Um, it has to have a high roof. We can't um, we can't stand up fully in a curiel because she's only got a low roof. And even a pop-up roof, which seems strange to me, a pop-up roof to the DVLA does not class as being a camper. This is going to annoy me. <laughs> um, the, to, by their standards, you know the way you see camper fans on the road all the time, even like the VW campers, they have the pop-up roof. Um, for extra height but that doesn't count that that's not enough to make it a camper it has to have an actual high roof on it um, and you have to have decals well obviously we have the decals because I make them myself and I sell them by the way so if anybody wants to get in touch if you want some specially designed little plug there um, but anyway that's not viable for us so the guy said he knew that himself obviously he's done a lot of work in, in this area um, and he said, look, I know, he said, I have people who have just given up on their projects because they have gone back to the DVLA so many times and it keeps coming back as a fan with windows. So, um, all those companies were out because they were saying, well, yes, we'll take it, but only if it has a DVLA certificate saying that it is a motorhome or camper van. Um, and that's not going to happen. So he said, we have one company that will insure you. Age of the fan, V5, not a problem. It will insure you exactly the way your fan is. Two and a half thousand pounds per year. A curial so far, our total build costs, including buying the fan, are sitting at about 2,300. We don't have a lot of money. Um, we stretched ourselves to limit we borrowed some of the money to um begin our dream we borrowed money towards buying the fan um we have mr squirrel is very very handy and he has done all the work himself absolutely everything that we have done and a lot of it has been done with um reclaimed 
items that we you know repurposed from other places stuff that people have given us um or things that we've bought second hand we have done this as cheap as possible we do not have an extra two and a half thousand pounds a year to insure that vehicle it's just not viable for us um paying monthly that was going to come in well over 200 pounds a month and it's just 200 pounds that we don't have so by this stage I'm panicking and I said to the guy look I'm, I'm gonna have to get back to you I can't agree to that I'm gonna have to talk to my husband and see so now we are panicking um I can see the dream just like sailing away from us um Curiel really we we love her so much we we've had a really rough couple of years and she really has been our therapy she has been our kind of like that was it 2024 was going to be better than the last lot of years we have bought her we have put everything into doing her up we do different little things in the background when we're not camping and just that freedom of knowing that we can just at any time get in her and go somewhere. Um, and the whole sort of like, I love stargazing, you know, standing outside at night and just looking at the sky and looking at the stars. It, it just makes my heart feel peaceful. And again, in the mornings, opening up the barn door, sitting in the bed with the cup of tea. The few doing the Bible reading by the bird song, it's just, it's been everything to us. And the idea that we were going to lose it, we were both um, really stressed, but we couldn't understand where are we going to come up with this two and a half thousand pounds um, to ensure the thing. And um, yeah, what were we going to do? So the options were sell her and give up on the dream altogether. Um, sell her and try and buy another fan which okay in a few years time it might be the plan um you know we this is our first experience with the camper van in a few years time we might decide do you know what let's sell her on let's invest in something a bit bigger let's do something different but it wasn't what we were planning to do now we've only had a few months with her um and yet it, it was just a real what do we do so Mr. Squirrel was um, here and he was frantically trying to sort things out. I was feeling really sick as I say I haven't been well this week. I said to him, look, I'm sore, I'm tired, I'm stressed, I, I need to go to bed. And I went up to bed and I couldn't sleep. And I started praying and I'm talking to God and I'm saying, do you know what? I know, I know in the grand scheme of things. There are wars going on, there are famines, there are floods. There is a lot going on around the world. And I am going to talk to you about fan insurance. It's really pointless. It's so insignificant. But for us, it's a lot. It's important. And I was like, God, I need this sorted. I, We cannot lose what we're getting from this fan and um, so while I was trying then to get to sleep and still all these thoughts going around in my head um company phoned um about insurance to give me a quote because I'd done like an online form thing and I went through some of the talk with them and then I got to the end and the guy said oh this is a day fan we don't do day fans so that was another no. And downstairs I could hear Mr. Squirrel making similar phone calls. And he was being told that because the fan is worth less than £5,000, companies weren't going to take that. And then finally, another phone call came through. And I was like, first of all, do you do day fans? Yes. Okay. Do you take fans that are over 15 years old? Yes. Do you take fans that are worth less than five thousand pounds? Yes. Okay, let's talk. So we talked and um, I managed to get insurance. And it was 
367 pounds for the year. I think that's including interest because we're paying by direct debit. So that's like the full amount is 367 pounds. That's in comparison to two and a half thousand. So yes, the point of this video to save yourself any hassle, to save yourself trouble and trauma and <gasps> what do we do? Um, sort out your insurance properly and um, look into different. Some people were telling me that actually until the full conversion was done, their insurance company still counts it as a fan and you can have just fan insurance. But our company weren't having any of that. They said as soon as the bed is in it, it's a camper van. So different insurance companies have different um, criteria and different, um, obviously, what they'll accept. And very, very different. I mean, we always say shop around, don't we? But when you shop around, you expect to save a few quid. You don't expect it to be more than £2,000 difference. Um, and actually, we're paying less now for a day van than we were originally paying for the van. So it works out about like one night's camping every month on, on the monthly premium. So, you know, we're better off for it. Um, but yes, it was very traumatic and it was very upsetting at the time. And I just want to make other people aware that you might fall into um, a bit of a pitfall if, if you're in that sort of um, grey area that we are in with day fans. And make sure as well, if you don't have all the different bits as well when you are getting insured tell your company it's a day fan because it does make a difference and it is a different type of policy um and yeah as i say two and a half thousand pounds down to 367 so definitely shop around and don't think that the dream is over just because one company comes back with an absolutely ridiculous thing because it can be done so be warned um, forewarned is forearmed as they say and um, yeah um, get yourself sorted keep yourself cynical and good luck <laughs>